Today I'm going to be showing you just how easy it is to use FrameMaker to create your Ditter XML content. In fact, you can use FrameMaker 10 to create any XML content that you require. It could be a standard like Ditter or XStockbook, or it could be any structure that you create. So today I'll show you how to create a Ditter task and then add that to a map. So I just want to show you how easy it is to do that edit and we'll do a publish too and we'll take a look at the uh, source code. Uh, this XML content can be opened up with any other XML editor and publishing system if you want. XML is XML. So why don't I start by just clicking on File, New, and we're going to be creating a Ditter task. So I'm going to say File, New, Ditter task. Now FrameMaker is going to be wondering where we're going to put this. So basically what I did was I created a subdirectory on my desktop called Ditta. Since it's a task, I created a subdirectory called task, and I'm going to name it task1. So far, so good. Hit save. Not too hard. Uh, very, very simple thing to use. Very, very simple uh, to be able to create topics uh, in any of your XML content. So we could create topics, small topics, no problem. Not worrying about format uh, if you're talking about data and uh, publishing that way. Or what you could do is you can have an XML document that looks just like your uh, unstructured uh, document and you can have guided authoring for the whole uh, structured XML book. Uh, but in this case I'm going to be creating just a task in this case. So basically what I did was I highlighted the, uh, the pre-text uh, uh, populated title and I'm just going to say this is a task title. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to actually add to this content. I want to add to the structure. So we have a couple of things that we can take a look at. If you look to the lower right hand corner you'll see the structure that's in place. Now I can use that and when I actually click below title you'll notice that the elements that are valid at this particular location show up. We have the name of the elements and we have a description next to it so you can know uh, what each element uh, is actually used for. And you can add to those descriptions. So you'll notice we have description on some, not on others. But you can actually modify those things. So basically uh, you can be just the person who simply creates the content uh, and uses the system the way I'm showing you. Or you know you could be the person that sets it up for everyone to use at your enterprise and you have the flexibility to add descriptions and a whole lot more than that. In this particular case we'll just be talking about uh, just what it takes to actually be the author of XML content uh, with FrameMaker. So you'll see the structure here but you have a couple of choices. I could actually go to view view and boundary as tags. So if you're the type who likes to see the XML tags, not a problem. Uh, we can do that for you. Uh, you can look at it this way also. So it's your choice. I personally don't like the uh, tagged uh, view. I like it uh, from an authoring standpoint. If I'm just simply authoring an XML uh, document, I don't like the tags. Uh, but some people who uh, like to uh, author uh, XML do so. It's your choice. Uh, with FrameMaker you do have a choice. I'm going to actually shut off the tags uh, for my case because I, I find it easier just to click here. And Next thing I'm going to put in there is a task body because that's the Ditter uh, structure. And uh, We can decide what else uh, we want to put underneath. I'm going to put in an element called context. And here I can say I will be demoing Ditter content with FrameMaker. Not too hard so far. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click back into the structure. You'll notice that these are the elements that are valid. I want to create some steps. Uh, this is a task. Uh, you'll notice that uh, when I do that, uh, the structure is already pre-populated. I don't have to do anything as an author. All I have to do is just type. So I'm going to say, what are the steps to create a, uh, a task in uh, FrameMaker? So I'm going to say, click FM icon. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually click on the structure again. I'm going to add another step and I'll say file new data task. There you go. Not too hard. So if you wanted to see what it was like if I left the uh, 
the bubble view on there, the tag view, no problem. Uh, what I can do is I can actually have it set like that. And what I would do is I would actually just click into the structure that way. Uh, so it depends on how you like to operate. Uh, we can definitely do that. And I could say, hey, the next step would be replace title text, because that's what I did. Uh, like I said, I don't like the uh, tag view. It's too much like XML source, although FrameMaker creates XML source. There's no need. I, I don't need to edit. So it looks like XML source. I'm making it easy. Uh, I, I, right now, I'm the user. I want to make it as easy as humanly possible. So I'm going to hit another step, and it says, I want to say build. Guided structure. And maybe one more step that basically is add task to to the map. So now I get some nice uh, steps uh, here. And uh, if I wanted to, what I could do is I could actually just click into the structure again. Now I want to add a result. Now this is just the definition of Ditter. Uh, if I use any other uh, standard, the elements that are valid in whatever location I'm at would show up. And I would just select those. If I wanted to, I could create a custom structure and only the elements that are valid at that particular location. I could match the uh, your the template. It could be something as generic as what we provide. This is what we provide out of the box. And it's nothing that you, you had to do any special. As soon as you installed uh, FrameMaker, you had the ability to do what I'm doing right here. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the result is easy to use pure XML content. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to actually save this particular document. I want to do a file. I'm going to do a file save. So now I have effectively, when I saved, I actually validate against the Ditter DTD. Now if I did something that wasn't valid, you'll also have some visual cues. It makes it real easy for the user. See that dotted line? that red dotted line on the right hand side, that's telling me that it's not valid. I could also validate against our document. I'm going to click on validate and I'm going to say start and it shows me exactly where the uh, problem is and I can fix it. Uh, and now and to fix it I can just drag and drop if I wanted to, no problem. You know I could validate again and it says oh the document's valid. So basically that's just saying hey I want to be able to save. So basically I just saved this document the uh, next thing we probably want to do is let's go take a look at the exact XML um, source itself that we just created. So I'm just going to go to View, and I'll select Notepad. So basically what we're going to do is we're opening up that particular document in Notepad. Uh, the uh, source is the source. It's not an issue. And uh, here it is. It's right here in front of us. And I'm going to close that out. And we're back to our document again. So the next thing that uh, we'd want to do is we want to create a uh, data map. So that's uh, fairly straightforward too. So what I'll do is I'll just say file new data map. And we're going to want to put that data map somewhere. So I'll put it at the source right here and I'll say I'll call it data map. Not too fancy. Uh, it's the way it is. So basically right now what I have is I have the uh, title and uh, if I wanted to I could actually make any change. Yeah, this is the title or I could choose not to. I could click down just below or I could actually just click into the data map itself. We make it real easy. You can just click on this little down arrow. We can add a topic ref which is a topic. Now I'm actually, remember I've creating something that's got to do with Ditter. If it's any other standard or any other XML custom structure, you don't have to go through a Ditter map. You could actually create a, a, even a FrameMaker book if you chose to and publish with generated files. But we're talking about Ditter right now. Uh, I'm going to click on Browse and I'm going to go to Task and I'm going to select Ditter and you'll see my task1.ditter. That's what I just created. and I'll say OK. Here we go. So now if I wanted to, what I could do is I could select back in and decide to add some more topic graphs. Uh, this particular case, I'm going to add some concepts. So I grab some stuff that already exists. I'm going to say OK. 
Okay, so I built up my uh, data map. Now this this is the view that we have, but we have multiple views. If we want to click on this little icon that looks like a document with a eyeball on it, it's the document view. I can click on that and it actually gives you the view of the document there. So you have the opportunity to make changes this way too. So I'll just say Ditter map. So it's really got to do with your choice and what you want to do. So if I wanted to go back to the original view, I'll go view resource manager. Very straightforward. I'm going to now click on the save icon and now I've just saved this data map. So now I can do uh, other things. So I have the data map, I have uh, topics, it's very easy to create. Now uh, maybe I want to publish. So I'm going to go file, publish. And then I can decide what I want to publish. So I can publish quite a few things. I can publish a chum file, which would be HTML, uh, web help, Adobe Air, an EPUB file, Oracle help. All these different uh, publish options. Not a problem. I could just simply select what output I want and click on publish. FrameMaker and Tech Communication Suite will do everything else. And now what I'm doing is I'm just simply publishing this uh, document uh, to the format that I want. It's not using the. Um, so we have the ability to publish. So, and the other thing that we could do is if you actually click on file print. You could print out your documentation or you could do file, save as, uh, PDF, and you can create PDF uh, documents. We also have um, uh, PDF for review workflows, so you can have a free uh, workflow for uh, approvals. Um, so we have the ability to publish. So, And the other thing that we could do is if you actually click on file, print, you could print out your documentation or you could do file, save as, uh, PDF, and you can create PDF uh, documents. We also have um, uh, PDF for review workflows, so you can have a free uh, workflow for uh, approvals of your uh, content and commenting. So that's built into the uh, uh, to the solution. So if you just clicked on file, you'd see publish, publish.